Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Maybe you're about to hit the jackpot. Maybe you're on the point of inheriting half a million or finding oil. Chances are, though, that none of these lovely things will happen. Chances are, if you want a bonanza in the future, you'll have to save it up. Now, there are a number of ways to do that. Some people stuff their mattresses, stash their cash behind a loose brick in the fireplace, or slip it under a floorboard. None of these methods make sense, because money so stored isn't making a cent for you. Not only that, it may get lost or stolen. Wouldn't you rather your savings made more money for you? Wouldn't you rather have them theft-proof, loss-proof in every way? Of course you would. And you can, the United States Savings Bond way. Through the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank, $3 will get you 4 on maturity every time. Nicest thing of all, it's literally impossible to lose your money. If baby shreds your bonds into confetti and drops them out the window, you can recover your cash plus interest in United States Savings Bond. I just don't understand why you couldn't sleep, Mr. Dillon. Unless you had the colic or something. I feel fine, Chester. I just got a few things to take care of at the bank, that's all. Oh, but the bank's open all day. Yeah, it's the early bird that catches the worm, I said. You know, my mommy used to tell us that one about being healthy, wealthy, and wise. She used to rot us out of bed every morning at daylight on count of That's a good saying, too. Yeah. I don't know what become of my brothers, but I sure ain't living in a very big house. Yeah, maybe you ought to come in here more often. I've got no business with the bank, Mr. Dillon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hogg. Good morning, Chester. Morning, Marshal Dillon. Morning, Mr. Hogg. I'll be over there in a minute as soon as I straighten this stuff out here. Morning, Marshal. Oh, good morning, Mr. Papp. You taking money out, Marshal, or putting it in? <laughs> Neither, Mr. Papp. This is a government business. Cashier, I haven't a minute to lose. Certainly, sir. What can I do for you? I want a loan of money immediately. You say, yeah. Fellow's pretty excited, ain't he? Well, do what we can, sir. First of all, how much do you want? $20,000. $20,000? Uh, Mr. Papp. Right away. Excuse me, Marshal. Gentlemen, this is our president. You have to talk with him. I heard you say $20,000, gentlemen. Now, that's a lot of money. What do you have for collateral? My collateral is right here in this envelope. You may look at it, but don't reveal it to these other gentlemen. These are playing cards. Don't name them. I'm afraid I don't understand. Look, I've been in the poker game at the Lady Gay all night. And right now, there's about $40,000 in that pot. There's some good hands out, and I've put every cent I have into it already. Now they give me just 20 minutes to come up with more money. Well, I certainly wish you luck, sir, but I never heard... You've seen my hand in that envelope. You can lend me the money on that. But surely you don't expect the bank to enter a gambling game. These gentlemen are also in the game. They came along to see that those cards aren't changed. And the other men are watching the table in the back room at the Lady Gay. It's all fair and square, I assure you. Well, gentlemen... I'll gladly pay you 10% interest, Mr. Uh, You've only got five minutes left, Hook. Well, come along, gentlemen. We we'll step into my office. Marshal, I'd like to see you before you go. Yeah, sure. Well, now that's about the craziest thing I ever did here. Well, I must have a pretty good hand. I know, but you don't think Mr. Pat's going to lend him no $20,000 on it? I doubt it, Chester. There. Well, let's take care of this stuff, huh? Uh, this uh, government business, Mr. Hogg. You know what to do with it. Certainly, Marshal Dillon. Uh, let's see here. Oh, 
Marshal. Marshal, Marshal. Huh? I, I want you to come with me. What? Uh, these gentlemen, there's, there's a poker game. I've got the money here. I, I think you'd better come along just to be safe. You mean you gave him his 20000 Yes, of course. Come over here, Marshal, I'll tell you. Marshal, that man hooked there has four aces and a ten in his hand. It's a sure thing. Why, the bank stands to make $2,000 on this loan, and it won't take but a few minutes. You run the bank, Mr. Papp, but are you sure that you ought to take a gamble with other people's money this way? But I can't lose. There's another chance in a million. But I want you to protect this money till I get it back here. Well, all right. I'll see nobody takes it at the point of a gun if you think that'll help. Any. Yeah, come along, then. Hook's only got a few minutes to get back in the game. <laughs> you've been to. You'll see it. What do you got? All blue. Five little hearts. They're no good. Four aces. Well, look at my hearts. They read two, three, four, five, and six. Such a flush. Your, your aces lose, Hook. Four aces. How could he have a straight flush? I got it dealt right out of the deck, Hook. Right out of the deck. Nice part, huh? Adding up. But he... He... He, he won. <laughs> Mr. Papp, I, I... I don't know what to say. $20,000 just like that. $20,000 and it's not even my money. Now, Mr. Papp, don't you worry. I only borrowed that money. You get it back. You have my word as a Confederate gentleman on that. Hook, oh, oh, please, Hook. I have, I have got to have it back. It's not my money. I have to put it back in the bank. Oh, I'd be ruined if people find out about this. You only loan the money. I lost it. I, I'll send for it today, sir. I'll wire my agents. They'll have it on the next train that leaves St. Louis. No, Hook, no. no I, I don't think that'll happen. My word is a gentleman, sir. But you must be patient. No, I shouldn't have done it. I had no right to do it. Chester. Yes, Go tell Doc I want to see him, huh? Sure. All right, uh, listen to me, all of you. I don't want a word said about this to anybody. The bank is important to Dodge, and this could ruin it. Do you all understand? All right, then see to it, or there'll be trouble for all of you. Oh, Marshal, I, I should have listened to you. I, I'm ruined now. Maybe Hook's got money. I don't know. But if not, we'll figure something out. People will give you time. Oh, no. No, no, they won't. As soon as they hear about this, there won't be any bank. They won't trust it anymore. They have to. It's the only bank there is. What will my wife think? My children? I can't face it, Marshal. I, I just can't. You go back to the bank and tell the cashier to keep his mouth shut about this. You've got to give it time. Sure. Sure, Marshal. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Marshal? I'm sorry for that man, but he has no reason to worry. I'll send for the money once. Yeah, you do that, Huck. Send for the money. Now, what are your names, gentlemen? Uh, my name's Shane Ways, Marshal. I'm sorry for that banker, but it's nothing to do with me. I won this money fair, and I'm keeping it. Certainly, of course you are. Who are you, mister? Borden. And I agree with Shane Ways. Gambling money's fair money. Nobody's arguing about that. Just remember what I said. Don't talk about this. Oh, Matt, there you are. Chester said you wanted me. What's happened? I didn't hear any shooting. Everything's all right, Doc. Oh? Well. Hey, you look familiar. Don't I know you? I haven't had the pleasure, sir. Oh, maybe not. No, I guess not. It's my mistake. Never mind them, Doc. Come on with me. Doc, I want you to go over to the bank. Mr. Papp is pretty upset. See what you can do for him. Give him a bromide or something, huh? Oh, sure. Yes, sir. 
What's wrong with him, anyway? He just lost $20,000 in a poker game. He what? He wasn't playing. He lent the money on the strength of what looked like a good hand. That man Hook came into the bank for it with the other two. Oh, he brought his cards along and raised the loan that way, huh? What? How did you know? Well, I heard of that once, man, down in New Orleans, years ago. Well, what happened? Well, the same thing. Tyler got the money and lost it, that's all. You mean it was fixed between him and the others? Oh, sure. No, it was fixed, all right. Well, how did they find out? Well, the fellow that borrowed the money got drunk and talked. They put him in jail, but the others got away, clear. Doc, that gray-haired man you thought you recognized, the name's Hook. Are you sure that you never saw him before? Oh, a lot of people look familiar at first glance, Matt. You know how it is. In New Orleans, you didn't know the men who pulled the trick on the bank, did you? Well, now, people said that they'd come down on the riverboat. I was doctor on the Tennessee Bell then, but I never met them. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Uh, do you recall hearing their names? Well, that was a long time ago, Matt. Look, Doc, those three back there may have pulled the same thing just now. Hook looked familiar to you. Now, maybe he remembers you, too. Well, he just said it. He'd never met me, Matt. Yeah, but he could be lying. Well, sure, but I can't place him. Uh, probably never saw him before. All right, go see what you can do for poor old Pat. He's in a bad shape. Sure, man. <laughs> Do you see speed laws and other regulations as restrictive? Well, that could be more infantile than believing one can prove his superiority by ignoring a stoplight. Unfortunately, too many drivers on the road subscribe to that kind of emotional outlook. The result is tragic. Almost 85% of all traffic accidents in America are caused by careless, childish driving. We hope sincerely that your attitudes are adult. We hope you know our traffic laws and the people who enforce them are there to help save your life. Hello, Matt. Get him. Uh, you know, Mr. Hook, this is Marshal Williams. We met earlier. Yes, indeed. I'd like for you to come with me, Hook. What for? Just do it, huh? Whatever you say, Marshal. I'll be back, Miss Kitty. Yeah, sure. All right, Mr. Varden, Mr. Shaneways, you're coming with me. What? What? Now, is this an arrest? Now, what would I be arresting you for, Shaneways? <laughs> Nothing. You got no reason. That's right. All right, come on, let's go. bringing us here, Marshal. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Where can I... Oh, hello, Marshal. Lum, these men want their pictures taken. Now, wait a minute, Marshal. Can you do it right away, Lum? Yeah, I certainly can, Marshal. And, uh, gentlemen, you'll be the very first to stand before my new drop, the ancient temples of Greece. It'll lend you dignity and power. What's the idea of this, Marshal? A lum here is going to take your pictures, that's all. Uh, front and side views both, huh, Lum? Yeah, certainly, Marshal, certainly. And then if you gentlemen leave Dodge, any one of you, it'll make it a lot easier for the law to find you and bring you back wherever you go. This is outrageous. I'm not going to stand for it. Now, wait, Barton. I agree the Marshal's being a little high-handed, but after all, he must protect himself in his job. But since we've done nothing wrong, we have nothing to fear. Sure, Hook's right, Varden. I'll go first. Are you ready, Mr. Lum? Right this way, sir. Uh, Lum. Why, oh, yes, sir. Uh, bring the pictures over to the office when they're finished, huh? Yes, sir, Marshal. Well, Lum's a pretty good photographer, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, these aren't bad. Lock them up in the safe, would you? Yes, sir. You reckon this will keep them in Dodge? No, not if they really get scared, it won't. Well, they're guilty, all right, ain't they, Mr. Dillon? 
I can't prove a thing, Chester, one way or the other. Ah, oh, hello, Doc. Well, what's the matter? The matter? Bad news. Well, what is it, Doc? Well, Mrs. Papp sent for me a little while ago. I just came from there. Yeah? Matt, he killed himself. Suicide. What? Huh? Pap? About an hour ago. Oh, that poor man. Well, how's Mrs. Pap taking it? Well, not a tear so far, but I suppose she'll break down later. A neighbor woman's there with her. Does she know why he did it? Yes, yeah, seems he told her all about it. And then he went out and shot himself. Uh, there's no stopping it now. The story will be all over town in no time. Yeah. Well, well what are you going to do now, Matt? I don't know, Doc. I just don't know. I'll buy you a drink, Kitty. Oh, gosh, I'd like it, Matt, but I just said I'd join Hook over at the table. But I'd like to talk to him, too. I'll just sit with you for a few minutes, huh? Oh, that's fine with me. I don't know about him, though. I don't think he'll object. I just got time for a smoke, Hook. I didn't think you'd mind. Well, I know you're quite welcome, Marshal. Buy you a drink? No, thanks. I want you to know I sent for that money today, Marshal, just as I promised. I'm afraid you're a little late. Late? Mr. Papp shot himself. He did? You mean Mr. Papp, the banker? Yeah. Why, Matt? Maybe Hook will explain it, Kitty. Well, now, Marshal, you can't hold me responsible in any way at all. I didn't say I could, Hook. But you seem kind of nervous about it. Well, naturally, I'm upset. After all, the man did me a great favor. I don't... Yeah, sure, sure. Tell me something, Hook. How were you in New Orleans last? New Orleans? Why do you ask that, Marshal? I'm just curious. Well, I've never been in New Orleans. Does that answer your question? That's good enough. Ah. Goodbye, Kitty. I'll drop by later. Sure, Matt. And Hook, it still goes about not leaving town. I like it here, Marshal. Yeah, you should. Looking everywhere for you, Mr. Dillon. Delmonico's, Lady Gay, everywhere. This is the last place to hit. What is it, Chester? Here, just you read this. Marshal, we're taking Doc along. If you follow us, we'll kill him. <laughs> Where'd you get this, Chester? He was under the door when I opened up this morning. I ran up to Doc right away, and sure enough, Mr. Dillon, he's gone. Come on. Now you go check the depot and the stage line. I'll go over to the livery stables. All right, sir. I'll meet you back at the office. Yes, sir.
longtime favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand. Since 1919, America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Brand is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. Try it, okay? Okay. <laughs> to do but take a chance and ride east. Luck was with us, though, and within an hour, we cut their trail. Four horses leave a pretty fair track, and we followed it, riding hard. By dusk, we could tell by their sign that we'd nearly caught up with them. And soon after dark, we spotted their fire. These were gentlemen, maybe, but they were mighty poor hands on the prairie. We left our horses and went ahead on foot. You're going to shoot it out with this gun? No, we can't chance it, Chester. They'd kill Doc. Here, hold up a minute. Yeah, that's their horses just ahead. They sure is taking them a good piece from camp. Yeah. Lie down. What do we do, Mr. Gillen? Well, we'll wait. Those men are mighty green at this game. I think we can steal their horses without any trouble at all. Just leave my foot, huh? Yeah. Now, look, Chester, when we get those horses, I want you to pick up ours and take the whole bunch out of sight. I'm going to crawl into that tall grass just to the left of the fire there and hide until morning. Mr. Dillon, why can't I go with you? Every time we get in trouble, you ought to send me off somewhere. You want me to do everything alone. Chester, will you do as I tell you? Yes, sir. Now, you just wait till you hear gunfire, and then you ride in fast and bring all the horses. All right. Good luck. By dawn next morning, I was half burrowed into the ground and covered by blue stem grass not more than 30 feet from their camp. I could hear their talk all right, but I couldn't see them unless they were on their feet. Shaneways had already gone out after the horses, and pretty soon he was back. Lift their ropes. That's why every last one of them. What are we going to do now? You and Shane Wears will go after them, that's what. I'll stay here and guard Doc. But hurry up. we got to get moving. Come on, Martin. We'll never find them. You can have this country, Doc. I don't know why you ever left that salt berth you had on a Tennessee bell. Well, I didn't have to leave it. That's more than you can say about New Orleans. Any more of that talk, you'll get your throat slashed like a fat shoat, Doc. Spoken like a true gentleman, a hook. Or whatever your name is. Doc, if you hadn't talked so much in the first place, you wouldn't be where you are now. Ah, oh, you're a fool, Hook. I might have seen you somewhere, but I sure couldn't connect you with that New Orleans business. Anyway, you've given yourself away now. How? Don't you know there wasn't a thing the law could do until you ran? Well, you'd be caught, sure, now. And why don't you untie my hands and I can't eat this way? You manage... I let Doc and Hook wrangle on until I figured the other two men had walked about a half a mile from camp, and then I waited until Hook had his back to me. I stood up, slowly moved quietly forward. Doc saw me, almost spoiled the game, but he caught himself in time and then started another argument with Hook. I was about 15 feet away when Doc suddenly kicked the coffee pot off the fire and all over Hook's leg. All right, don't move, Hook. Marshal. And I'll take your gun. Come on. Easy now, Marshal. Don't shoot. Now get Doc's hands untied and be quick about it. Yes. Get it off, Marshal. Take it easy. Oh, wow, that feels bad. Hook, if I were a professional man, I'd punch you right in the eye. Never mind, Doc. Here, put his gun in your belt. Yes, I'm just mad enough. I'd like to have an excuse to you. I'm mad. Matt, but, sir, what are you... Well, you'll have them back here in no time. Where have they got the money, Doc? What? In that saddlebag over there. See All that right. yellow one? Get it, will you? Yeah, sure. Hurry up! Who's you heard the shot? They're heading back here. All right, get on that horse, Doc. You too, Hook. Quick now. 
There they come. See him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I see him. Hey, they're shooting at us. They can't hit us from there. Come on, let's ride. We just got to ride off and leave them, Matt. We've got you, Doc. We've got Hook, and we got the money. They'll die out there, Marshal. None of us knows how to live on this prairie. Maybe they'll learn. It's a good way. But you're murdering those men. They'll be all right for a few days, Hook. They'll all meet in prison. All right, ease up. We've left them. What are you going to do about them? They're full of fight right now, that's all. I don't want a cap to kill them to take them. But in a few days, they'll be so hungry and scared, we can walk right up to them. Nobody will get hurt that way. Neither them nor us. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Mr. Dillon, later in a couple of days, let me come back and bring them in. Just me, this time. Uh, now, Chester, oh, I... please. Okay, Chester, you can do it. Alone. Thank you. All right, Hook. Ride a little faster there. We ain't got all day. Got a light, buddy? It'll cost you only $70 million. Americans have some 180,000 lights at the wrong time and place each year. Each one flares into a torch, crossing the country miles of magnificent forests. That means millions of board feet of valuable timber burned, wildlife, fish, game, birds cruelly destroyed, soil erosion started, watersheds crippled, crippling in turn communities and industries that depend on them for pure water, power, and light. Homes are leveled, lives are lost. A waste? The word is hardly adequate. And to think nine out of ten of these fires are caused by human carelessness. Resolve that your carelessness won't fire the forests this year. Crush out cigarettes. Break matches in two after using them. Drown campfires, stir the ashes, then douse them again for good luck. It'll be your good luck as an American if we can cut down the forest fire toll this year. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Matson. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Ralph Moody, Jeff Kirkpatrick, Vic Perrin, and Jack Moyle. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.